Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for March 16th. March 16th is the 75th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 76th in leap years, with 290 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is cardinal. Cardinal can be a noun or an adjective. As a noun, cardinal may refer to a high ecclesiastical official of the Roman Catholic Church, ranking just below the Pope. Cardinal may refer to a cardinal number, and you'll have to ask your favorite math teacher about that one, because I thought I knew what a cardinal number was, but as I looked up the definition in the dictionary, it was confusing, and I couldn't make sense of it. <laughs> All righty, moving on, still talking as a noun here, cardinal may also refer to a crested finch with a black face and a red bill or any of several red-headed passerine birds of South America and the West Indies. As an adjective, cardinal means of basic importance, such as a cardinal principle, or it could mean very serious or grave, such as a cardinal sin. The word cardinal comes to us from Middle English, Anglo-French before that, and ultimately from Latin. First known use of the word cardinal as a noun is before the 1300s, and in the 1400s as an adjective, cardinal. And with that, James Madison was born March 16, 1751. He's often referred to as the father of the Constitution. He played a pivotal role in drafting and promoting the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. Mr. Madison lived to the age of 85. This is the birthday of George Ohm, born March 16, 1789. He was a German mathematician and physicist and was interested in the electric chemical cell that had been invented by the Italian scientist Alessandro Volta. Mr. Ohm discovered that there is a direct proportionality between the potential difference voltage applied across a conductor and the resultant electric current. This relationship is now known as Ohm's Law. He is also known for other physics laws, and he lived to the age of 65. Mississippi formally ratified the 13th Amendment on March 16, 1995, becoming the last state to approve the abolition of slavery. No worries, though, because the 13th Amendment was officially ratified in 1865 once the substantial majority consisting of three-quarters or 27 of the then 36 states had ratified it. Today's song is Sitting on the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding. Sitting on the Dock of the Bay was co-written by Otis Redding and Steve Cropper and recorded in the second half of 1967. Otis Redding considered this to be an unfinished version and planned to re-record it after the first of the year as a final version. Unfortunately, that didn't happen as Otis Redding died in a plane crash on December 10, 1967, at the tender age of 26. The record company, Stax Records, released the song as it was in January of 1968, and it hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 on March 16, 1968, for the first of four weeks in that number one spot, becoming the first ever posthumous single to top the charts in the U.S., Sitting on the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding, number one on March 16, 1968. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that is called No Really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, BitChute, all those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Do not disturb. Okay, I turned do not disturb on. Good job. Third time better be a charm. <laughs>
January 2nd. The 16th, it's all written in Roman numerals, so I had to translate it. <laughs> Flinging happiness all over the place. All right, back to work. I think we got it this time. <laughs>